I think it's obvious, but Japanese people are obsessed with insects. But I mean, can you even blame them? There are some insanely cool insects out there, so how can you not be interested in them? While other parts of the world calls these critters creepy crawlies, Japan calls them awesome organisms. I'm kidding, they don't. But in an article written in the American Entomologist and from looking around Japan myself, I'll tell you exactly why there's such fascination for these insects. In Japan, there is a plethora of media about insects, so children get exposure to the amazing world of insects at such a young age. For Japanese children, interest can begin in the classroom, or maybe independently at a bookstore where they spot an enticing cover with a majestic horned beetle or a beautiful butterfly. Maybe they're watching Pokemon and a Heracross pops out and starts sucking off Bulbasaur. Or for parents that want to jump in their child's education, they put on a nature documentary that focuses on the incredible insects that the world has to offer. Or maybe they simply came across one with their very own eyes and marveled at its sleek elytra, elongated horn, and unbelievable size. Whatever the case, it captivated generations of Japan and created a culture of arthropod enthusiasts. Most nations wouldn't go this far to cultivate these interests, but Japan takes it a step further by providing all sorts of programs for children to engage with. There's beetle exhibits, museums, petting zoos, and special conservation programs. For example, in Yokohama, there's been a decline in stag beetles, so a local park invited kids to take home some stag beetles to breed and then return the eggs to the park. Not only do the kids get to raise their own beetles, they also learn about the breeding process and conservation. Although the prevalence of insects in pop culture and media exposes kids to these critters, more importantly, the perception of these bugs are widely different than from other countries. In other cultures, insects are seen as stuff of nightmares, but Japan sees them for their interesting idiosyncrasies. Many Japanese kids in Japan will come across these educational books called Zukang, and they're chock full of interesting facts, and it's meant to educate them in a fun way. Aside from these educational resources, there are so many video games, shows, and toys that are based on insects. In fact, go to any area with Gacha Gacha and you'll see one for insects and animals. Bet you weren't expecting this abrupt unboxing. This is Mushi Jingu. I think it'd be kind of fun to open up some random packs of insect based stuff that you can get around Japan. And we're going to go in with the first pack. I want to know how they do it here. And Pokemon's always one from the back, but let's just go straight into it. Here we've got a beautiful ant. I have no idea what the heck its English name is, but Kuroyama. Hari, black mountain ant, a butterfly. You know, the hits from this, I have no idea, but you're guaranteed one super rare card, but I'm hoping for some kind of beetle. Got a caterpillar here. Got whatever this is. And our first rare, I guess, is going to be some sort of grasshopper. In June of 2005, Mushikingu, a game about insects battling each other, was the best selling video game on the Game Boy. But Mushikinga didn't limit themselves to handheld consoles. They also dominated arcades with standalone arcade machines with collectible beetle cards, and I can easily say this is a big reason why I grew to love insects. Okay, I'm at my local arcade today and I found a machine that has beetles. Check it out. So I think we're going to try to win it and hope for the best. Now, this seems like kind of a gotcha, but at the same time, you can totally see what's in it. I, can't, I didn't really check, but I'm going for this blue one now. Let's hope we can actually win. I've always been historically bad at these games, so let's try. A good get, and immediately falls out. Well, that's the arcade experience. Although these games were for kids, a lot of parents grew up on catching beetles, so many of these games were highly encouraged by the parents themselves. This creates a cycle of newer generations cultivating interests and knowledge in entomology, from past generational passions. Summer in Japan is marked by its hot humidity, but the roaring cries of the cicadas let everyone know that it's time for hunting insects. One of the biggest activities in the summer is to go out and hunt for kabutomushi. It's always a rush to find beetles in the wild, and naturally, everyone competes to find the biggest and strongest ones. It gets so serious that there are even events and competitions for these beetles like the beetle sumo competition. 
For kids that are stuck in a city and can't go out to find these beetles, it's no problem at all. The support for entomological supplies is incredible. Just go to any major department store in the summer and their pet store will have beetles. And they're incredibly cheap too. Japan makes it so accessible to get into this hobby and for the more serious owners or breeders, there are plenty of specialty stores in Japan like the one I went to to get my Hercules beetle. If you are ever in the need of serious tools like forceps, vials, and professional nets, then supply stores like this nearly 100 year old store are available. Many children in Japan grow up to be huge enthusiasts as adults and it's estimated that there's 300,000 individuals that breed beetles as a hobby. This number doesn't even include casual pet keeping. While children have many colorful books highlighting these amazing creatures, there's also so much specialized literature and journals for adult readers as well. With all the availability of professional supplies, it's very easy to start a personal collection of insects. In fact, most famous Japanese taxonomists aren't affiliated with any university at all. They just do research as a hobby. Because this hobby isn't very monetizable, most prominent figures have a full-time career completely unrelated to entomology. Thus, many findings from hobbyists are regularly published in academic journals. Although amazing that there's such a huge support for this hobby, it doesn't go without any concerns. Despite many private collections floating around the desks of Japan, a huge concern is that it'll never be donated to science. Many hobbyists carefully preserve insects that are scientifically significant but are unwilling to donate them to museums because they're seen as a personal treasure. Another concern from this craze is that some insect populations are in danger from overcollecting both domestic and foreign. Taking insects is generally fine, so some insects have been driven to extinction before the government can intervene. But now there's a proper list of protected species in Japan. But insects in Japan aren't the only ones at risk from these fanatic collectors. There are so many charismatic species across the planet and a big fear from both the Japanese and foreign governments is the extinction of those species due to collectors haphazardly taking them home. There have been many cases of smuggling insects and with the current craze for beetles, this isn't stopping anytime soon. Now I did say there's no money to be made from this, but in recent years, a lucrative market for beetles specifically appeared and some are making bank from it. You can probably hear the cicadas, but in the past 10 to 15 years, there's been a huge boom in rearing and breeding beetles. Although domestic species are pretty cool, <laughs> serious hobbyists like myself are really into collecting and breeding foreign species. In recent years, restrictions for beetles have been easing so there's more variety and choices in beetles you can get now than if you looked 20 years ago. Because of this, there's been a huge problem with smuggling beetles into Japan from places like South America and Southeast Asia, which are hotspots for these cool critters. Now, although it's technically allowed for foreign beetles to be in Japan, besides the explicitly banned ones, it is an existential and legal concern for the countries the beetle is getting smuggled out of. The reason why Japan is so relaxed in the import of beetles is based on two assumptions. One is that the imported tropical beetles won't be able to survive the temperate climate of Japan. And second, these beetles are collectibles, so they just wouldn't be discarded in the wild. Is the market even that big? Yes, yes it is. Some collectors are willing to pay out huge sums for rare beetles. For a domestic but rare beetle, a breeder was able to sell their 8 centimeter Dorcas curvidens for 10 million yen. And for a rare foreign one, this one stag beetle from Turkey was reported to sell up to $150,000. That's absolutely insane. Although Japan is heralded for its lack of crime, well, less crime. In 1999, it was reported that a burglar broke into insect stores and stole around $67,000 worth of beetles. You know it's gone off the deep end when theft outside of bicycles and umbrellas happen in Japan. Aside from the more lucrative aspects of collecting beetles, it is truly remarkable how insects are positively portrayed and ubiquitous in pop culture. It's nice to see insects represented as they are instead of being broadly demonized as creepy crawlies. 
Japan has fostered a culture and history with insects that anyone with even a slight interest can easily learn more about them. Growing up mostly in the US and a little bit in Japan, it is a stark contrast. And I think it's unfortunate that kids in the US aren't informed about these incredibly cool critters that's all around them. From Hercules beetles east coast to the west and ox and best beetles you can find marching along the ground, it's a shame that there's no awareness for these amazing creatures. So I hope to make this channel another resource to teach and spread the love for beetles. So if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, whatever you need to do for the algorithm. And please check out my other videos about the awesome arthropods that we share the world with. And again, thank you so much for watching. The Giraffe Stag Beetle says bye bye